Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you some Arteza products. Some people say it Arteza, I'm not sure, but I say it Arteza. Some products that they sent me to try out and uh, show you on a video. So they sent me a, a two pack of the acrylic paper pads as well as a set of 36 colors of a metallic acrylic paint. And as I was swatching the paints, I noticed that there was a lot of warm colors and they kind of reminded me <laughs> of uh, trying out lipsticks <laughs> because of the metallic sheen and all the different warm colors like raspberry and papaya and all these, um, you know, shell pink and all these, these colors. And so I decided to do a female whimsical portrait uh, just because I was inspired by all the lipstick colors. So I'm starting out with the acrylic paper pad. Now these pads, I've had them in the past. I had one that I used um, all year last year and it was a spiral bound one. These are um, gum bound and there's two of them and each of them has 16 pages of the paper. And it is very smooth on one side and then it's very textured like canvas it's it's like an imitation of a canvas pressed on the other side so when you paint it on that side um, you get the idea that this is painted on canvas it's it's uh, very sturdy paper it will stand up to mixed media uh, the other pad that i had i did a lot of collage and then painting over the collage and all that type of stuff um, doing my different animal portraits and some of my digital background exchange pieces on it. So good paper for mixed media. I recommend it for mixed media because a lot of the papers that we get, even the paper that's called mixed media paper, doesn't really hold up to it when you're putting a lot of wet media and collage and all this stuff on it, it starts to break down. So this is great paper for mixed media if that's what you're doing. But I'm just going to straight up paint on it, uh, just do an acrylic painting. So the first thing I'm doing is I have a drawing pencil, a graphite pencil, and I'm making a drawing of a whimsical uh, person, female type person, to try out these paints, see how they work. Uh, the style will be somewhat kind of like pop art, sort of, with a lot of different patches of color, not a lot of blending and definition. Um, maybe that's not what I intended when I first <laughs> started, but that's what it ended up being. That's, that's how things happen uh, when, you're, when you're doing this, when you're painting, it comes out what it wants to be. I didn't have a big plan. I just had a plan to make a female face. So once I get all my drawing done, then I will start painting. And one thing that I did notice when I was swatching the colors is that there are only five that are opaque. All the rest are, are semi-transparent. So, so none of them were marked 100% transparent. Um, they were almost all, with the exception of five colors, uh, semi-transparent, which means that if you paint over the lines, you'll be able to see the lines through it. And if you paint one color over the top of another color, they're not going to, to block out the other color. So I started out with one of the, the opaque colors. I think it was, it's called bronze, I think. Um, and then I also was trying out another of the opaque colors that was called raspberry red. Just getting a start on my skin tones. This person is um, meant to be Latina. So she would have very coppery skin, almost uh, kind of a copper colored skin if she's been in the sun. So that's why I started out with the copper. Plus I, I wanted to try out one of the opaque paints first. Then I am using... Another one of the ones that's marked opaque, and I think it's it's something deep brown. 
it's the darkest brown and it was marked opaque as well so I figured I'd use that for the shadows and the thing that I wasn't really thinking about I probably should have started lightest and worked to darkest but that's not how I tend to do it because I often use titanium white to add back in my highlights. This is just the way I work. And so I wasn't thinking about there not being an opaque white in the set. However, I do have an Arteza acrylic paint set that has regular acrylic paints, not the metallics. So I do end up adding in one tube of titanium white paint from Arteza because I wasn't thinking about my, I, I just always add highlights after <laughs> at the end. That's just the way I do it. And I, I use an opaque white or a titanium white um, or a zinc white, or sometimes I would use something like a buff titanium, which is an off white color. So I didn't leave any areas for there to be highlights. And because the, the metallic acrylic is semi-transparent, it doesn't go over the top of those darker colors and leave a really white, bright white highlight for me. But this is the first time I've used the metallic paints and I just didn't think about it. So I'm using different colors, different colors of pinks and reds, different colors of um, copper, some purple, uh, bringing in a little bit of cool colors for the shadowy areas. There's a really nice dark purple that's got pearl in it. They're, they're all pretty much called pearl something. I think that's the pearl violet or pearl, something like that. I don't know. So what what is a metallic acrylic paint? Well, it's got mica in it. <laughs> Anything that is metallic in your art supplies, whether it's inks, whether it's paints, whether it's sprays, those have mica in them. And so anything that you add mica to is gonna have a pearly sheen when it's dry. And that's exactly what these paints are. They're pearly, they have a sheen to them. And when I did my, um, photographs at the end. I took them outside to try, I took the painting outside to try to get the metallic effect for you. It, eh, it's hard to photograph things that are shiny. It just doesn't work very well. Even the video, you can't really tell that they're metallic paints. Maybe a little bit when I hold it up to the camera and twist it in the, in, you know, back and forth, like I did with the, the swatches at the beginning. But yeah, you just, it's just hard to show them on a video, but they are very, very shimmery and shiny and pretty. And with, when this is hanging on the wall, it looks really cool. So trust me on that. They're, they're pretty paint, <laughs> very pretty paint, just hard to demonstrate. I could do it in, in real life. So on Thursday, January 30th, on the Art Joy of Sharing live stream show, we're going to do gel printing. And I plan to use these paints on the gel press plate to see how they, ha what kind of cool stuff I can do with metallic acrylic paint on the gel press. And so if you are still interested in these paints, you might want to come and watch that live. It's at 1030 Central on January 30th over on the, my other channel art joy of sharing live stream or i will of course probably make a speed video for this channel as well so you can wait for that sometime on the 30th or 31st of the month to see what they look like when we play with them on the gel printing press so this is the part of the process where i bring in the titanium white acrylic paint titanium white is a, is an opaque paint and this is what I generally do. I add highlights after I add my darks. Um, so I'm just using the titanium white to lighten up the areas where I want the highlights to be. And then I'm going, once it's dry, I'm gonna go back over it with the various colors of the semi-transparent um, metallic paints. So it looks like I did the whole thing with metallic, 
there isn't any flat paint on here when it's finished. I just had to add those light areas so that I could come back in with the, the lighter color paints because the lighter color paints just wouldn't have worked over the top. So that's that's just something you have to think about when you do, are doing your process. So here on the video, this color that I'm putting on right now, well, I was, <laughs> the yellowish color down at the bottom looks so dull on the video, but this is such a cool color. It's called Pearl Chartreuse, and it's like a green yellow color, and it really looks great as a contrast to the darker colors in the face, but it's not doesn't look good on the video at all. It just looks blah. <laughs> That's so weird. I don't know why it is, but hopefully in the close-ups you'll be able to see that it's a really interesting color and a good placement of the color. I did a kind of painterly background using the stiff brush going back and forth, back and forth um, to make it look like she's maybe standing outside somewhere near a lot of flowers, like maybe a flowering bush or something. But nothing specific, nothing, you know, that's really defined. I just wanted to add colors and a little bit of movement and pattern in the background. So I used a half inch flat brush and just went back and forth, back and forth and made kind of a crosshatch. And it also created texture because, of course, this is an acrylic paint. So it's, it's um, I would say this is probably medium body. It's not super heavy but it definitely made areas of thicker and thinner paint as I was doing that, which gave the, the painting a texture. That's always interesting. And if you look at the paint painting from the side, you can the, the light catches the texture and you see darker and lighter pattern on it. So then I also used the white acrylic, the titanium white acrylic paint on the pe petals of the flower. I wanted to keep the flowers white. And so I wanted them to have dark centers with white outside on the petals. And that's pretty much what I achieved at the end. <laughs> and I'm using a, a more blue toned green for the base. It's called cactus green, pearl cactus green for the base of the leaves and then adding a little bit of that chartreuse over the top uh, to bring that color into the composition all around. It's a cool color. I, I don't usually like chartreuse. I usually think it's kind of um, vile, <laughs> but <laughs> I like it in this pearl paint. It's probably my favorite one of, I am the turquoise, I am the purple. Um, the turquoise is really nice. The purple, I like Okay, I liked a lot of the colors, whatever. <laughs> I can't pick pick and choose, I guess. Um, the hair was done with a color called a pearl space gray, which is the equivalent of their black in the metallic paint. And it is more gray than black, but it's a pearly color. And that's what I did the hair and a lot of the detail work at the end with, which will be coming up after I get all the other stuff done. <laughs> so I hope you're enjoying this video. I did want to tell you that there is a coupon code. It is shell C3, S-H-E-L-C-3, the number. Um, you get 10% off anything that you buy from Arteza uh, on their website if you use that code. And I will put links to the Arteza website for these products that I'm using today, which would be the acrylic paint pads and the 36 pack of the metallic acrylic paint so that you can find them. But they have a lot of stuff. I really like their uh, water brushes. They have a good valve on them. Um, I like their, they have some Water brushes that are filled with watercolor paint that are pretty fun. Um, I think they're called real brush pens or something like that. They have a lot of products. Arteza has a ton of stuff. They've also got things like vinyl and, and um, cutting mats and cutting tools. 
things like that. They have the regular acrylic paint, which I have a set of that from last year sometime at the beginning of the year. And I used it a ton, so, so, so much on the gel press plates. And I'm st I still have tons of the paint left. Those little tubes seem like they're small, but they last a long time. So I'm still using those paints on my gel press plate, just like I will be using the metallics at the end of the month. So now I have a, f a fine detail brush and I'm using that space gray to add detail lines, basically um, illustration lines. I didn't use any pens or anything on this. I just used paint and a small brush so that I could bring out the details of things, um, the details of the eyes and the nose, the mouth, the teeth. Um, I did detail work around the flowers and leaves with that same space gray color to get everything all detailed up. So that's my style, I've decided. I like illustration lines. <laughs> it's just how I do, so. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already and turn on your notification bells if you're not getting notifications of when there's a fresh new video coming out. Um, I do want to tell you again, if I didn't at the beginning, that this video was made sponsored by Arteza because they provided the products for me to use. Any opinion that I've given on the products is my opinion alone, but yes, they did provide the products for me to try out and tell you what I think. Also, don't forget the coupon code SHELC3 if you'd like to get 10% off of your Arteza products that you purchase. So now I'm adding another layer of color to the background um, to make it a little bit more dimensional. This really does add a lot more texture to plus vibrancy of the paint because these being semi-translucent paints, the more layers you put on top, the more vibrant it gets. So that's why I'm doing that. It's all dry and uh, ready to add a second layer um, I forgot to paint her earrings gold, so I had to, to paint those. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> it's like this weird spot there that I hadn't painted. I'm like, what is that? Oh, right. She was supposed to have earrings. Of course. So just a little bit more detailing and adding, um, you know, I mean, when do, you, when do you stop? When do you stop painting? That's the tricky part. You can just keep going and going and going. And I did decide I should finally stop, so... I think you've pretty much seen how I made this whimsical portrait using Arteza metallic acrylic paint on the Arteza acrylic paper pads. And there will be close-ups at the end. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.